Hello, welcome to the Scale Model Club, and on this week's show, Airfix's 172nd style commando painted Seeking HC4. Great. Hello, welcome to the Scale Model Club. And on this week's show, I say this week's show, it's been it's been weeks since I've been here. But anyway, on this show, we'll be building Airfix's 172nd style HC4 Seeking. Now, first time we've had a helicopter on the uh, on the channel. Only the second helicopter I think I've ever built. So let's see how this goes. The kit looks very nice. Did the unboxing couple of weeks ago we we'll speed this little bit up so it's just standard standard stuff cut your plastic from the uh, sprue with your cut side cutters and then sand off little extra bits now on this particular model there's an awful lot of drilling so I would recommend get yourself a pin vise which is what this is and a tiny set of drill bits um, also a good idea to get yourself along them little modelling mats, that way it doesn't go through, you don't drill holes in your table. Um, I always drill through from one side, uh, obviously usually it's the outside, uh, the inside to out. Um, and then once you've had, uh, once you've done that, turn the thing over and a couple of turns on the outside so you get, you see sort of deburr the edge, just makes it a nice little hole. So starting with the cockpit, and so I've drilled out the holes for the seats, um, and these are all the cockpit walls and stuff. I'm uh, going to use my Bulldog Models glue holder, which is proper handy, I, I do recommend those. Uh, I've lost the brush off of the end of my glue, it went a bit manky because it's quite an old glue, so I don't use that much. So I've just got an old, an old paintbrush. It's a little bit more accurate as well. So that's the cockpit all fitted together. Now we've got some sides, some seats, uh, some seats on the inside. Uh, this this model does have an option of um, uh, fitting a motor to make the rotor blades move around. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't know if it's just me. I mean, I'm in the UK, um, but I couldn't find anyone who was selling the right motor. Uh, Airfix don't seem to sell it on their website either, so... I did have a look around to see if I could retrofit other motors, but that's a little bit beyond my talent, that is. So I thought, well, we'll just build it as a model. Um, I've had this in my stash for quite a while. Um, I just haven't, I've been a bit frightened to build it because the model looks really nice and I really wanted to build it, but the paint job has just scared me off. Because uh, obviously I want to do the Tiger Stripe Commando paint job, but. Um, there's, there's a lot of work involved in that. That's why I have decided to put this uh, particular build into two videos. So I've got a build video here and the paint video next. I needed a break in between the two just to sod myself up for it. Yeah. But it went together really nicely. I had a few problems with the floor or well, not the floor, but the under the undercarriage, the underside, because um, this is obviously the floor of the interior. But I mean, the actual bottom didn't quite meet the sides, and it, was, it took me quite a lot of tape and pegs and all sorts to try and keep it together. That's the cockpit. A little tiny seat goes in the end. Now we have the rows of seats that go down the side. Um, that's what I think you drill all the holes out for. Because depending on what type of which, which model you're building, some of them don't have the seats inside. So I decided to go for the seats because I wanted the doors open. So, but I will say the seats are probably the only thing on it that aren't very detailed. But then you probably only see about three of them. So. 
So seats both sides. I don't know anything about seeking helicopters at all. So forgive me if uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing or what bits I'm talking about. So that's the two rows of seats. I think we've got some more seats, a couple of little tiny seats at the back. And then we come straight to the cockpit where I'll we'll have two seats at the front for the pilot navigator, the old joysticks to, to steer it. And this is me undercoating. So this is just Vallejo's, I think it's actually a ghost grey. It's, sort of, it's ghost grey and it's an undercoat. So, so I've painted the whole thing grey. The the inside of the interior is should be a, a light grey anyway, apart from the seats. And obviously the cockpit uh, binnacle is black. So we undercoat, quickly zip through this. Uh, it's a cheap little airbrush for undercoating. Um, I need to get some new, I need a new needle, a new nozzle for my expensive airbrush, but they're expensive, so I haven't managed to go. And this is uh, the pressure's about two, and it's a zero two needle. So undercoating all the insides anything that's going to be stuck together in the next part. Make sure everything's coated, a little bit awkward to get in between all the seats and bits and pieces, but... So there we go. Quick clean out, and I think we're on to the black. Yep, so that's a surface black primer. I actually bought this to go with the aluminium, but I thought I'd give it a go first time out here. Uh, there we go. A few issues with, with the airbrush. There we go. So the front half is cockpit is black, and and so is the binnacle. I won't go over this with a matte black. I'll just leave this as black. You don't see it. It's on the interior, so. There's no interior bits to be open. And here we have the binnacle. So we'll give this a spray black, let this go off. Um, and then stick the clocks and the decals to the front of it. the interior finished um, I painted the seats in a royal blue color and now I'm just going to cover the whole thing in some varnish uh, not some varnish well some clear coat um, so that I can then put a wash on it and not harm the gray color uh, the wash I'm putting on is uh, streaky grime because I wanted it to look grimy so literally popped on a little piece of streaking grime give it a white brown with the cotton bud and then you get like a dirty grimy dirty grimy floor so that's that done and next job is to actually get this fuse last together I won't speed any of this up um, because this was I find it quite difficult. Actually, the fuselage going together is fine. Like I said, it's the floor that was the problem. Oh. Make sure everybody likes and subscribes the video. Really impressed everybody watches the video. Thanks everybody for all your support. As you can see, I am not a professional. I just do this for fun. But 
I really enjoyed the helicopter build, I must admit, I will, I will, I will try and get hold of another one. I was debating whether to actually get another Sea King and do it in, you know, Sea King colours, nice yellow. So I think I had a few problems with getting the floor to stick to the sides, uh, mainly, and it's my fault, because I used the Tamiya Extra Thin Glue and that's not really going to work because it's been painted. So I think what I'm going to have to, yeah, it didn't stick. So what you need is just a little dab of super glue because the super glue will glue the two bits of plastics together after they've been painted. And there's quite a lot of stuff in modeling where you probably need to paint it before you glue it together. Here we go. Like and subscribe. Push that notification bell. So, a tiny little bit of super glue here and there. Push the interior in. Uh, of course, your other option is to scrape off the paint with your X Acto knife or your scalpel, whatever you use to cut stuff away with. Just scrape away the paint so you're left with the bare uh, plastic because that's what the glues do. The glues actually melt the plastic slightly when you're almost welding them together. So that's the interior stuck in one side. Quick, quick check of the old instructions. And it is quite a different type of fuselage. So obviously you have the fuselage stuck to one side. The next thing I need to put in is the roof and to the top of the helicopter where the rotor blades come out and stuff. And then you stick the bottom together. So it's almost like a cube, like a you need to do two sides, top and the bottom. But in this order. So you don't want to put the, this is usually you put the next side on, but you need to put the top in first. But up to this point, everything fitted brilliantly. Very impressed with the Airfix model. I do like, like I said, I will build another one. I'll just do it in Sea King colours. Or I might see if I can find a different type of helicopter. So, a quick check of the instructions just to make sure I know where this goes because this covers the top end. Just the, top end of the actual inside of the fuselage and a little bit of the cockpit so this is, needs to go in in just the right place for everything else to fit yeah it's looking fiddly that's that that looks about right looking fiddly for mr sausage fingers over here but no. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much where I think we needed it. Uh, I painted that part separately. Um, so that's also going to need a little bit of glue to stick it on. I think we're going to have to hold that in place as well because that's not going to sit there. And uh, I'm not going to be able to get a peg or a bit of tape on there just because of the awkwardness of the bits. I'll get this on. It's gone straight for the Tamiya glue. Just I think that's because we can hold it in place and just let the Tamiya glue run around the edge. And then hold that in place for a bit. Okay, so. Note to self, at this point, um, the, uh, I've undercoated the fuselage and the windows have gone in um, because you have to put them in from the inside. What I didn't do, which was a bit silly, I didn't paint the back of the seats. See, the back of the seats are grey and not blue. And when you turn it over, you can see the back of the seats 
through the windows that I've put in. So make sure you paint all of the seats when you do this yourselves. I may have got away with it. I think I painted, I think I realized at some point when I was putting this together and painted one side. So I got away with one side. So this is the engine cover cowling at the top. Oh. Dropping everything inside, it's because you don't mind holding them too hard, they could bend it, and just end up dropping it all. Luckily, that's not big enough to get lost by the carpet monster. There we go, lovely. I think now we're probably all ready for the other side of the fuselage. So, right, so you see what I mean? So when I put this on, the seats aren't painted, and I put the fuselage on, and then suddenly realize you can see the unpainted seats from the windows. do But it does fit nicely together. So run some more glue down the edges. And then get your pegs and stick the pegs together. Now then, what I did was I, it's not on this video, but I, I realized what I'd done with the seats and I took, I quickly stopped, took that apart, painted that one side with the two windows in. I couldn't do the other side, it was already stuck um, and then carried on. So, but just note to self, paint, the, if you're going to have the seats, paint the seats. You don't have to just have it as an open helicopter see what I mean but you can see the seats and I held it up and thought oh man but it did it, it's still it all fitted nicely together and it's a nice model it's got some nice panel lines on it A well molded, but nice model to build. The instructions were nice and clear. The only thing that let us down was my talent. These are quite cool. These are actually from Airfix. Um, I use these quite a lot. I think I got them with a set of pliers or something. Never really thought much about them, but they they, they get in some awkward places and they hold some awkward bits of stuff together so they're quite nice just to hold that there just while the glue goes off because you haven't I haven't quite got a peg that will go that wide and it has a more even spread of pressure when you clamp it down so that's the fuselage done before I realized what had happened and took it all apart and started again So, here we have the floor. This is the one piece I, it didn't fit. And I don't know quite why. What would happen is you could put it in the bottom there and it looks fine. But the sides, there was a tiny two mil gap. All, see that all the way around the edge. And whatever I did, I couldn't get that gap to close. So it was just a case of gluing it together. I think I put a couple of G clamps on it to see if I could get it to close closer, but it wasn't having none of it. So I thought, well, that's a nice filler job I've got. And obviously it's really like that, it's really wide at the bottom. See, I couldn't get a peg on it. And I think I've only got, 
I've got three of those little G clamps and they're all a different size so I think I only had one that was big enough to go around the whole the whole and I needed about three of them but as you can see the model comes together it's coming together nicely looking more and more like a helicopter So yeah, I needed one there and another one in the middle and one right at the end, especially at the end. I mean, the bottom is shaped like a hull of a boat. So that, the piece where it comes to a point where my fingers are at the back end there, you, I couldn't get a peg on there or anything because it just kept slid, sliding off. Oh, it's a nightmare. I think in the end I covered it with glue and just held it with my fingers for a while, I might have got some tape on it, I can't remember now. As you can see I do the voiceover just after I've done the model. Sorry it's been such a long time since the last video, I haven't actually been at the bench at all lots and lots of other things going on unfortunately the uh, modeling has taken a bit of a backseat now I see now a, a sane man would have gone insane by now the amount of times that fell off and the pegs fell off But this is all good. This is good. This, this, this is what we all go through in modelling. This is good. So even someone that is as amateur as, as I am can't get these right. And there's no point cutting out all this stuff, is there? Because you all want to know where it goes wrong. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't sit square. It was just, just one of those, just one of those things. And I don't, I wouldn't blame the kit. I don't think it's the kit. I genuinely think it's what I was doing. Just didn't, it didn't quite get it right. Still trying to get the front to stick. So anyway, thanks for everybody for sticking with us. Thanks for uh, sitting here and watching me desperately try and stick the bottom on this helicopter. Uh, thank you for liking and subscribing. Uh, next video is going to be the paint video. That should be fun. That's what I've been frightened of. So make sure you come back and watch the second part. Because once this floor's on, and I've got it stuck, and the clamps are off, we're on to some masking. Um, I might do a little separate masking video, not just, just in general, um, because I didn't, because uh, there's not much of that. Just to show you how I do it, really. So, you know, I'll put the tape on it, use a cocktail stick to go around the edge, and then cut it with your brand new blade. Fitting the cockpit on. That fitted really nicely, I've got to say. But that was no glue, look, it just sits there. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.